We know your money is important to you, and these days we're paying more for just about everything. That's why the CBS2 investigators are committed to staying on top of every scam. And you won't believe the diabolical deception CBS2 investigator Dorothy Tucker uncovered using a Chicago rapper's name. It was an uneventful day for Lulu Cole. Left my car getting ready to go inside to deposit a check for a business transaction. Until she stopped to chat with a stranger. He asked me about my car. <laughs> he said his name was Jeffrey Washington. Who claimed to be working for uh, CETA. CETA, the Community and Economic Development Association, a nonprofit that helps Cook County residents with emergency assistance. As I started to walk away, he asked me if I had any bills. Washington explained he could help pay her mortgage, car insurance, and phone. I initially told him, no, thank you. You're always leery of anybody approaching you. But before she could leave... He was like, no, 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 really, like, we have to use this money before the end of the day. He said he had $600,000 he needed to give away. If we don't spend this money, we lose out on the opportunity to help more people in the coming year. The chance to help the community struck a chord with Lulu is an opportunity for a mother to be able to feed their kids for another month. So I said, okay. To convince Lulu he had the power to make the payments, at 2.54 p.m., he had her call her cell phone provider, T-Mobile. Said, I'd like to make a payment. He rattled off a, a, a list of numbers. Using a bank account number, he successfully paid $350. Text was proof. Just to make sure, at 2.57, Lulu called T-Mobile again. And sure enough, there was a credit. Then he offered to pay a bigger bill, the remainder of her mortgage on a small property in Roseland. At 311, she called her lender, Wells Fargo. Again, he you know, was talking to the representative at the bank, uh, rattled off a bunch of numbers. 326 p.m., an email confirming the payment. All I heard from the representative was, oh my God, congratulations. At 4.02, she called back to confirm what she couldn't believe. 4.08, another email. Oh my gosh, he just paid off my mortgage. <laughs> I can't believe this, this is, this is, I felt ecstatic. Lulu was so grateful to see the payment that when Washington asked for a donation to support the pseudo program, Lulu gave him cash, $9,000. Cash. You got scammed. That's that Lulu's older sister, Ibby Cole. I did not believe it. Determined I mean, to convince her sister she bank. hadn't been conned, Lulu called Wells Fargo again the next day. And they're telling her, no, no, it's paid off. It's still there. But Online, Ibby really didn't change her mind that. until Lulu mentioned something else Washington claimed that the man behind the money was none other than Chance the Rapper. This is a person who has a reputation for being invested in community development and, and for doing random acts of kindness. We looked at a school's CPS rating. Fact, this multi-Grammy award-winning performer is a huge donor to Chicago public schools. You guys will be able to create jobs. Runs a charity devoted to empowering youth and is a big supporter of social justice programs. Phone calls, paper proof, Chance the Rapper, Ibby was convinced. And I'm like, oh my God, Chance the Rapper just paid your mortgage. We should go to his concert. Now, it was Ibby's turn to get her loans paid off. Fortunately, according to Washington, he had an extension on their funding. But you had to hurry. Two days had passed since he met with Lulu. Because you're thinking this door is closing, that also kind of clouds and shrouds your ability to reason. And I've only got until, I think it was maybe noon. So they met outside Ibby's bank, Chase. He said, hello. Um, he said, call your bank. We don't have a lot of time. She called New Res, where she had a $150,000 mortgage on this two flat in Inglewood and he pays off $100,000 to a new res mortgage. The confirmation, almost instant. Payment posted. Oh my God. He said, what else, what else can we pay off? Here's her list. 
Bank of America credit card, Chase credit card, PHH mortgage. So we got confirmations from every single banking institution. On paper, nearly a quarter of a million dollars. I felt like I was in a movie. And just like Lulu, Ibby was asked for a donation to keep the program going so others could benefit. Her contribution, more than her sister's, $27,000. It just so happened that I had that amount because I, uh, I was in the process of renovating a project. But four days later, Lulu got bad news. I got an email from my bank that said we couldn't process your payment. It was a tidal wave of reversals. I knew it's over. From every single business, the balance was back. I felt sick. I felt sick to my stomach. Who is this man that managed to convince these well-educated professional women to trust him? Police sources say his name is not Jeffrey Washington, and he's done this before. We're told the man known as Washington used the same scam in 2014, but he didn't add Chance the Rapper to the con until 2018. Up until January of this year, eight people had been swindled, as little as $500, as much as 8,600. Then came the sisters, but they were not the last victims. The CBS2 investigators recently learned there was another victim in March, taken for three grand. At a Starbucks in the South Loop, two months after they'd handed thousands over to a stranger, detectives met with the sisters to let them know they were not alone. We work hard day in, day out for someone to just come in and, and take the knees out from up underneath them. It's, it's devastating. And by the way, as you might have guessed by now, Jeffrey Washington doesn't work for Chance or CETA. We're not walking along the street and saying, hey, look, I, uh, I'm a CETA representative. I can hook you up. That's Harold Rice, CEO of CETA. Has he ever worked for CETA? Not at all. Any association at all with CETA? None. He may not have worked for CETA, but he certainly knew financial lingo. He knew the intricacies of each bank, who to talk to, what to say to, to be an authorized caller, how to request the payoff amount. But Ibby argues, there is no way I would have given him a time of day if the banks had not confirmed so many times. She points to the word posted, convincing her to trust the lender. When you see posted, you can legitimately assume that everything is kosher. Jack Gillis is the executive director of the Consumer Federation of America, an advocate for consumers. This is the most clever scam that I've heard in a long time. What makes it so different? He got the banks to participate in the scam unbeknownst to them. By sending the emails, the banks added legitimacy to the con. That's powerful. That's why it's so diabolical. Another powerful play? Washington knew it would take two or three days before the banks reversed the payments, giving him plenty of time to collect money from his victims. It's a huge setback. Huge, huge setback. It's devastating. It's definitely hard to come back from. It's definitely hard to uh, put your Put your faith in people. Because of our investigation, the Consumer Federation of America is pushing financial institutions to clarify language on the emails to write pending if the funds are not yet in the account. Dorothy Tucker, CBS2 Investigators. We reached out to all the companies involved. A couple didn't respond. Those that did expressed sympathy for the Cole sisters, but did not address our questions about making changes to their notices to prevent this in the future. You can read the full statements, watch extended interviews, and listen to an inside the story conversation about other scams CBS2 has investigated. Go online or on your phone, open our mobile app, and click on the CBS2 Investigators tab.